Hi and welcome. Today we will talk about the Internet Protocol Stack. This is a presentation that I created back in 2018 for a class of computer science. So the lecture consists of different various interesting aspects and uh, areas about the network, uh, Internet Protocol, and I'm gonna try and spice it up here and there where I give some relevances to security. So without further ado, let's get into it. The agenda itself kind of prompts you to download Wireshark, but in this online class, I don't think you should go ahead and download Wireshark right now. I'm gonna create a video in the future where I talk about Wireshark, how to use it and I suggest you watch that video instead. Um, for now, just follow the presentation and take some notes. So what is the internet protocol stack? So first of all, just wanna make it clear that there are many kind of stacks you can find on the internet. The, the, the original one is called the OSI model, which consists of seven layers. And those seven layers are used to find flaws and issues on a computer that is network related. Now, if you are taking a CCNA exam or whatever, Cisco certified, whatever it's called these days, you probably heard about the OSI model. And if you are a network engineer or network um, hired, you know, whatever time you're given uh, to, to, to make sure the network is working and running without any, you know, flaws to the best of your abilities, then you probably heard about the OSI model again, and you should probably know that it is used for finding flaws on a computer that is network related. So the Internet Protocol stack is a lesser size stack, which consists of five layers. And those layers are made only for you to understand how a package will flow from the top layer to the down layer to another computer and received in a reverse manner. So that is a, a, a model to, to, to tell you how the internet works and how packages flow from one computer to another. So let's look at the, the all uh, internet protocol stack. Now I want to say that this can also be called TCP IP stack. Um, some even called it the internet stack. Yeah, well, I have so many names. So. I just chose one that I found, you know, um, explaining. So the five layers, application, transport, network, link, and physical. The application layer is, is the layer that, that, that tells you about different kind of application layer protocols. And I wrote some examples like FTP, SMTP, HTTP, and DNS. Now, if you're watching my videos and been watching them for some time, you should know that HTTP is one of the most used protocols on the internet these days. So why is that a, an application layer protocol? Well, that is because an internet browser is it's a program, or you can call it an application. And that application is, is running its own protocol in order to understand and communicate with the web server. And the web server is also using a protocol in order to encapsulate data in the correct way so that other applications can communicate with that. And that protocol is called HTTP, Hybrid Text Transfer Protocol. A protocol is basically just a set of rules that tells you how long should I cut out from a string or a string of bytes, for example, or byte array. Um, depending on how protocols work, you know, you can receive and send raw strings or are you receiving a raw um, bytes array? In the end, of course, everything is just a raw byte array, but on the actual endpoint where you receive it, it could be uh, received as a string, depending on how the programmer decided to code it. Anyhow, that protocol called HTTP is coded into the actual application called a internet browser, which is why it is called an application layer protocol. Just like the Skype protocol, or the MSN protocol, or the Facebook chat protocol, or whatever protocol you might even find in any kind of program, game, or similar to that, they are all application layer protocols because they are 
coded in, hard coded into the actual application, which is why it is the application's protocol um, to fulfill some sort of purpose in, 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 in internet browsers. Purpose, it is communicating with a um, web server. Then we go down to the second layer called transport layer. This is where we have the process data and the transfer and the chopping of, um, not off, but chopping, chopping of data. So you divide your, your, your data into your, uh, specialized size uh, of chunks of data to be sent, sent away. We have two different kind of protocols called TCP UDP in the on the transport layer. And the TCP is, is the one that is used whenever you want to ensure that data is being transferred securely, not secure as in cryptography or something like that secure, <coughs> but secure as in you want to make sure that all packages are received and you want to receive some sort of answer from the receiver that it is received and it is keeping, keeping its integrity. So that is the TCP protocol in short. UDP is, is the one that is usually called unreliable. Um, not that the U and the UDP stands for unreliable. It's just a protocol that doesn't have any sort of checks to whenever a package is received. So um, usually used for streaming services or in some games, if the actual endpoint communication doesn't really matter, if you miss a package or two, think about streaming you're watching a video and you miss out let's say five packages and those will make out let's say 50 pixels on your screen doesn't really matter on a frame that is within 24 or 60 frames in a second that you know five pixels are missing or 50 pixels are missing missing no it does not matter will you even notice it no you will not notice it notice it so so that is the use case of udp protocol on the third layer, also called the routing of datagrams from source to source destination, you find the IP protocol, usually uh, also called the internet protocol, which it stands for. And basically on layer, layer three, it, um, it handles all the, the routing processes that you, well, let's say that you you want to send the package to some sort of IP, some sort of network. Well, this is where you your IP will be. So you want to send the package from your internal network to another external network. The network layer will use its IP protocol to define that IP address, which is the uh, receiving IP for this package. Going to the second last layer, it is called the link layer, and also uh, called data link layer. It, um, it basically looks on the MAC addresses on the network cards, and but it also got other kind of tasks like, um, um, let's assume that you receive a package and its integrity is not in place, then the link layer will actually delete that package. And well, if it's a TCP protocol sending it, it will tell the sending party that it needs to send another one. So, well, that's really what it does in short terms, of course. The physical layer is, is more about moving the bits on the wire. So it's cables and, you know, actual machines and basically the things you can see and feel. So, why all the layers? Um, so, I want to say that if you chop up a computer, <laughs> you will not see, you know, X amount of layers you can look at. It's not like that. It is just a way of logically explaining how a computer communicates in, in, in layers. It all kind of happens very, you know, simultaneously whenever it's done, it's like, like that. It's not like it going through a set of rules. Now, if you're a programmer, you might, you might, you know, vision this as, as then you have like an if statement saying, if you are on step one, like a state machine, then it's step, step two, you know, yeah, it doesn't really work like that. When it's in code, you know, it looks all different, just like a big line of, you know, many lines of code. So in a way, of course, you can say that it, everything happens like in turn, but that, that's just how a computer works. But explaining how a package is encapsulated and how it's being sent through a computer and so on 
one you should use these layers because it's easier to perceive it so I guess that kind of counts for this some some people like to to use this and um, this this um, uh, I mean, how do you call it uh, drawing of an an analogy of, of the internet protocol stack uh, like from a airport so you can say the application layer is the ticket purchase the transport layer is the baggage and so on and basically whenever you send a package from the application layer it, it moves from the top down being sent to another computer and it moves from the bottom layer to the top basically that's that's how it works um, there are many different kind of things you need to to know in order to understand how packages flow in your computer in this course I'm not gonna cover all these kind of very technical things it's gonna be an, like an overall introduction 101 how computers communicate with each other or with the network and of course some 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 hard sided theories and well not theories but facts to to how things are done so we briefly talked about the application layer and I introduced you to a few of the protocols. I mentioned a few more on this slide. Basically, I have nothing more to say about it, but of course, if you want to learn about different kind of protocols on the application layer, you can go ahead and, and you know, uh, look up the different protocols mentioned in, in the slide right here on the layer protocols. I, I definitely think it, it, it's it's worth for you to look at the the HTTP and the DNS protocol just because it's those two protocols that are used all the time whenever you are visiting a, a web page on the internet. So just having a brief look at the HTTP protocol and how it works. If you look at the the, the drawing to to the right, uh, you'll see like you have a PC running Firefox browser, and then you have a a phone running the Safari browser. And in the middle, you have a server running Apache Web Server, and basically, it's it's uh, it's called the HTTP request, and you get the HTTP response back from the server. So whenever you you send a request to a server, it is um, sending back to you a response, and basically, that is how the HTTP protocol works. And I think the most important part is is to understand that the HTTP protocol is stateless. Um, opposite to stateful. Let's just start with a stateful explanation. Stateful basically means that if you open a connection to something, it is kept open for the whole duration of the communication. So maybe you, you say like, hello, I'm a server, and then it kind of just stalls and wait until someone tells something back, you know, or the client just stalls and say, I'm gonna be quiet for 30 minutes. And then 30 minutes later, I'm going to send you some text and then, aha, you still have the connection open. That is stateful. Also, you know, this kind of should probably make you think, but then the 30 minutes waiting time is just death time, you know, lost resources. That is totally right. So since the, 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 the internet these days is all about getting resources and requesting a web page, requesting some, some, some data from a web server, they, they made the HTTP protocol stateless, which basically means that you send the HTTP request, you get the response, and the connection is closed. And, and, and now comes the, the whole understanding dilemma part, that the HTTP protocol uses the TCP protocol, an underlying protocol of the application layer. Don't be cheated by that, because even though that, that the, the upper layer application layer protocol decided to use the, the underlying TCP, it could use TCP or UDP, Bear in mind that when you request some resource for, for, for from a web page, you, you're still interested in getting all the data, which is why you use TCP, because you want to ensure that all data is, inter um, is received, and that is why we use TCP. If we, on the other hand, used the UDP protocol, it basically would mean that... Um, <laughs> That, we, that the server had no way of knowing that we received all the data. That would also make really many questions about security, because how is it possible to, to have security on a web page if you cannot ensure its data on the client? That would make uh, create questions about 
integrity and confidentiality uh, and and that would not be able to to work so that is why it uses tcp so in the uh, actual trans um transfer of, of data between the, the 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 client and the server in the actual http request there is a statefulness going on but as you received all the data from the web server the connection is closed and you cannot do anything about it so on the request part the http protocol uh, is stateless but in the tcp area if you go one down you could say that there is a statefulness going on as long there's been transferred some data but that transfer is controlled by the actual http request and the response and since we know that the response will automatically close the connection after the response is done that is why it is stateless okay so we're not gonna open wireshark so um just gonna leave it like that all right then we have the uh, transport layer the transport layer is the layer that that you know um handles uh, data it fragments it into different pieces to be sent over the network and 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 well basically that's it you know both protocols uh are, 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 are fragmenting data um yeah basically that's it the the udp is is the unreliable and 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 the tcp is the reliable if you want to um, think about it that way um the the only thing you will you will do on the udp and tcp protocol when you're a programmer is to define its port so whenever you you want to send a package you are defining the the port for um for udp and tcp and that's the only thing you find in the udp tcp header which is uh also displayed if you want to go ahead on google and type something like udp or tcp header you will find a small table looking like overview and you will see that you can put in some ports and ports are basically the same thing as as a saying service so if you want to send something to a server on port 80 basically you're 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 sending a http request because from the ports of 1 to 1023 and and it is with the 1023rd port that is the reserve ports which basically means that uh, you should not be using those whenever you're creating some uh, code or program that is using network this is just a a picture of of um of some things that i well i kind of use this sometimes to to let's look at how the the the, the actual um communication happens so you have the process layer is also what you call the application layer i know it's it's confusing but um you can kind of see that you have some sort of user process that could be a browser internet browser using tcp and on the network layer we are using the ip protocol and and then we're going to to send that through the network card which is on the data link layer and then basically from that it's is on the the well the physical layer and, and then that's it and i also talked about the link layer which is uh Concerning is it's only to deliver packages uh, just to the actual devices on the network. So, if you are thinking about this way, all uh, network cards do have a unique MAC address, and that unique MAC address will identify your computer. Uh, so, if you are on some sort of network and and the package is being delivered to someone, it is being delivered to a MAC address, and not a IP address. So the link layer also handles stuff like flow and error control, which I talked about in the very beginning of the slideshow. And that is about um, uh, keeping a package or deleting it if it's not um, uh, containing data that kept its integrity. All right, so then we came to the the physical layer and, and i guess this is kind of the boring layer i also call it because i can just show some different things 
if you have um if you can remember or you have the age you might remember some of these better and you might remember the 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 the, the old school token ring uh setups or you might remember having a modem beside your wi-fi adapter and you know these days it's just one device so but physically i have gone through a lot of visual changes i would say and which is good because who want to have like five boxes if you only have one to handle your wi-fi near internet connection so if you want to like have a view on how data is being encapsulated with the different kind of layers we went through today you could say that you have an internet browser on the application layer and the data is the actual http request which is being you know some say encapsulated i would like to say that it's just being you add on another piece of data which is called the tcp segment that basically contains the the protocol and the, the family type you know is this ip uh, is it um sorry not ip is it is it um if there's some, some sort of flags or stuff you you want to set but also the port number and then you're going to put on another uh, piece called the ip protocol which is called the packet and then you you define the the ip for the receiving and and the sender and then you put on the last one which is a frame and i know this is just you know if if, if you ask me if this is jimbo jumbo and and who made up these words you know of course there is a certain um amount of logic to the choice of names but you know if you're just looking at it and saying well basically what you're saying is you have you have some data and then you put some some extra data on on the back of that or in the front of it you know who cares you call that a segment where you define the protocol type for the for the transport layer i well yeah that, that is what i'm saying and then you say you put another thing you know behind that tcp data it's called ip you call it packet and it's it, it's it is confusing i i i agree with you um but this is just the way it is and if you want to look at it uh like from the top and say this is called encapsulation of a payload and the payload is the actual data, which is in this case, the HTTP request. Then you can see that basically when you think about this as a, as a layered thing, you say that you look at the outermost layer on the lower layer on the, the TCP the protocol stack, which is the data link layer, which is also on the layer two data link it makes sense that is it is the outermost and the, the first layer and then you look at that and when you move up you move in so that way the the, the logic makes sense and there are many different ways of explaining it you know in raw code it's just a line of bytes and it, and it would, could look like this basically this is how it looks like so this is a package with a frame and a segment and a payload it could look like that you know it, this is a uh, uh, little too little data here but but it, it, it looks like this it's just a bunch of hexadecimal numbers you know and without knowing whether it's a http protocol this could just be anything basically any piece of data it could be a jpeg image it could be a png image it could be some some frame for a computer game it doesn't really matter with this depending on where the data is sent to it will be passed and processed different which is why it is so important to understand that numbers are just numbers it doesn't mean anything unless you know uh, who the receiver is which service and the port so that kind of concludes the very first part of the tcp ip protocol sorry the, the 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 internet protocol stack which is the first 17 slides so the other slides in this will be about what happens when you enter example.com in your browser and before i answer the question let's just put out 
this picture uh, on the ground. So usually you say that the street is your internet. The actual yard the house is on is called the web hosting. And the the domain name is the is the um, the mailbox with the number and your name on, and the website is the actual house. So what happens when you open a browser, enter URL, you start by looking up the DNS. If you don't have it yourself, you're gonna ask your ISP servers and or your local DNS. What is example.com's IP address? That is basically the question. When you get that, you the browser will you know look it up, send the HTTP request. In this case, it's a GET request. Send it to the web server. The data is sent back to the computer, and the browser is receiving the data. And now you can see the web page. Basically, that is what happening in short. And depending on how advanced you want to go, you can. You can take every part of this and, and, and turn it into like a 13 step, whatever, 13 pages, 30 pages explanation of how things are working. It's not the point of this video, so I'm just gonna make it short. The actual DNS request is, is basically a lookup on a server. You know, for all you DNS guys out there watching my videos, you might say, oh, but you forgot the important part about talking about the 13. Uh, DNS servers and this and, and all the other kind of you know authoritative servers and stuff like that. I'm I know that, but this is only for uh, understanding what is DNS doing, and not a full overview of how every simple mechanism works on the internet. So, bringing us back to the actual question of the IoT or the Internet of Devices. There are so many things on the internet. Basically, it is just two computers connected or two things trying to communicate with each other. So when can we call something a computer? Now that is, um, I guess that is a philosophical question that I'm not gonna answer today. But um, for this uh, slideshow, let's just assume that a computer is something that is able to go on the internet and send and receive data. So there are many different things. It could be on a local internet. It could be on the actual internet, which is um, behind the cloud here. <laughs> and the IoT device idea is that you put something on the internet and, and when that something is on the internet, it can basically receive and send data. And in many cases, it could be like the new refrigerator you have a coffee machine that you can send an SMS and, and ask to make a cup of coffee. And they all have one thing in common, that security is not really built in that well. Now, I'm thinking about creating a video about security on IoT devices, but so far it's, it's gonna be pretty much out in the um, perimeter of, of, of uncertain amount of future. So for now, I'm just gonna say that maybe I will want to create a video about the IoT security issues. I guess this is just another picture. Doesn't really say much, but to put it in, into context, you know, the size of the internet is just as big and as vast as the universe as you might perceive it. Of course, there's no comparison to the amount of planets, to the amount of servers, that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that whenever a human is trying to perceive the size of something that is really, really big, it's not going to possible. It's not going to be possible uh, to do that. So, giving this picture, you might understand that just a small node or dot or pixel can be zoomed into to a, a really big picture, full of IP addresses, full of endpoints and stuff. And none of these are clients, it is just servers and endpoints and routers that is serving on the internet. So, what is the Internet of Devices? Well, basically we have many different kind of things on the internet these days. We have our phones, I talked about coffee machines, you know, even, even you know, robotic vacuum cleaners. And, uh, 
I want to say that the, the moment I heard about a robotic vacuum cleaner going on the internet, I was like, for what? Well, so that people can send in an SMS asking it to clean the floor. Did I say refrigerator? I mean, um, vacuum cleaner, sorry. Robotic vacuum cleaner. And this is just the most funny thing, but I, I do see the point of it, and, and I, I find it interesting that, you know, we do have a robotic vacuum cleaner, but it's currently not active, and it is not on the internet. But some of them you can find on, on the internet, bought from Asia and stuff, they're really advanced, and they can even map out your home, like your house, and how big the floors are, and where the doors and stuff like that. Interesting piece of device to get access to if you want to get data about a building. I created some slides talking about what is a switch and router and a hub, which is, I guess, obsolete in most cases. Modem, again, but it's good to have the memory, the firewall, Wi-Fi router. Go ahead and read the text of these. And basically, I'm just gonna pause. Well, you have to pause the video now and read the text from, from a switch. Pause and read about the router. Pause and read about the hub. Pause and read about the modem. Pause and read about the firewall. Pause and read about the Wi-Fi router. And then we have the server rack. Just simply to put it into context that the big server parks you have, you know, it's just a small rack like that. It's, it's like a flat, it is, it's about this size in many cases. I know it's difficult to see, but this length and this, this kind of depth, you know, if I tilt it and this kind of thickness, it could be thicker, but about this. And it's something you just slide into the, the actual rack in the, in the, um, in the shelf, what I'm gonna call it. So it's, it's just a server rack, and one of these is one server, and the, they are really cheap compared to like the actual, well, they're made for cooling, made for, to be a server. That is why it's called a server rack, basically. Um, yeah. The client could be anything, basically. Uh, it could be like a smartphone or a really old computer like that if it's able to go on the internet. Basically, just want to put it into context that a client could be anything, basically. So, I want to I want to I want to say that I, I think you should go to the internet and look up these kind of different words here because thinking about network and think about the the, the whole idea of how data flowing probably going to help you when you're learning about spyware or eavesdropping or vulnerabilities or ransomware you know trojans viruses and worms rootkits bootkits keyloggers whatever if you know about how packages flow on the internet, on your computer, on computers, through a cable and everything. It's gonna help you to understand the kind of different threats and security things. So please try and, and, and look up and read and learn more. Use this video as an introductory to the, the internet protocol stack. And basically, I hope you remember what I talked about. I know it's been very theoretical today and we talked about basically this model. It's also a long video now, but I really hope that you learned something and I really hope that you gonna like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any wishes for any topics, please write it in the comment below. I'm gonna get back to you. All right, so bye.